Shall we do this in mime? <laughs> good morning. Hola. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, good morning. Go on. I'm not doing anything else because I can't. All I've gone is sun shower, however it is. <laughs> Ooh. Pep Guardiola. I don't know. Is that an antacid? Yeah. Uh, welcome to Market Drayton. Uh, just as we're leaving, which is fortunate for the people of Market Drayton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're off today. Uh, just ahead of us, we've got Bridge 61, and then we've got the Turley Locks. Yes, it is Turley. Before the pronunciation police jump on me again. Yeah. <laughs> so we know that the Turley Locks can be a little bit way. The buy washers are, are fierce, according to one of the books. Not fierce. Looking, not looking forward to this. So we did a bit of research. We looked at uh, one of Pat and Eileen's videos from our narrowboat quest, uh, just to see how bad it was and how well Pat handled it. <laughs> it's weird because when we talk about Pat and Eileen, it's almost as if you can kind of hear the music from the vlogs. I can't hear nothing. Got tinnitus. <laughs> <laughs> so the Turley Locks today, and we're hoping, uh, if the weather stays like this, to get as far as Shebden, uh, where we, we might moor up there. If we like it, if we don't, we might carry on a little bit further. Let's see how we get on, eh? Yes, let's right. go. This is Bridge 61 or Turley Castle Bridge. Uh, it only carries farm traffic, it's not a road bridge. Uh, but it got me wondering, Turley Castle? Never heard of that, so I had to Google it. And apparently they did start building Turley Castle back in the early 1200s. It's about half a mile up that road there. There's nothing left of it and it really didn't come to much. There's still like the basics of it, but a farmhouse was built on top of it not so long ago. It's got a swimming pool as well. So you might have seen these cast iron rubbing plates on the corners of all the bridges on the Shropshire Union. And you see these indentations from where the ropes have cut into it. And that's why these cast iron things are on here. It's to stop the ropes cutting through the stonework on the bridge. But you might be thinking, well, hang on a minute, it's only rope. How can rope cut through stone? Well, if you imagine the ropes will have been wet working on the canal, they're gonna get wet. And when it mixes with the grit from the towpath, they become quite abrasive. So these are basically here to protect the bridge. This is Turley Cutting. You go through it just before you get to the bottom lock of the Turley Locks. And you can see where Thomas Telford and his crew had to cut through the rock to get the canal through. After all the nightmare stories we'd seen and heard about the bywashers at Turley Locks, we were actually quite surprised and relieved to have a couple of boats go up in front of us this morning. And they used quite a lot of water, so the pounds were a little bit lower. And as you can see, no bywash. Noticed on the Shropshire Union that all the lock gates are painted grey and white rather than black and white. I don't know whether that's just a shroppy thing. You'll probably know. Drop a comment down below and let me know. Uh, you might be wondering what these kind of tombstone things are. They look like tombs, don't they? Black doors on it, what's behind it? It's only got stop planks in it. Plank, stop planks are like just a plank of wood and they use them on the narrow canals 
to stop the flow so if ever they're doing works on the canal or they need to stop the flow after a breach or anything like that they just put stop planks in remember on the Macclesfield canal at Bollington where they used the stop planks because of the leak in the canal there sometimes they put them in these tomb things and sometimes they build these nice timber uh, like houses with roofs on them for them When you get to the top of Turley Locks, you're rewarded with this little beauty. This is the old stables, and Turley Wharf is next door. It's originally built for the boat horses with the stables, but Cadbury used it from 1917, and they used to load churns of milk onto the boats and deliver it down to the Knighton Cadbury Chocolate Factory, just a couple of miles down the canal. We'll get there in a bit. This has been done up though. In 2013, it was turned into a home. It's now a grade two listed building. And it's lovely, it's been a parish hall, a Sunday school, and even a polling station in its past. But it does look nice now. That was Turley. Quite sad, isn't it? It's quite a depressing place now. The stables, the house and the, the wharf are all lovely. But on the other side of the canal, you've got the moorings and there's no mains water, so the water point doesn't work. The services, the LSAM, the pump out, none of that's working. And it's a bit sad and depressing. There's water everywhere where it's been flooding and it's just not a very nice place to be honest. I feel sorry for the boaters on the permanent moorings there because they have to either go a few miles to Market Drayton just to get water or like we saw, uh, a really elderly couple have to walk with big buckets and containers over to the house and ask for water from them. Not ideal, is it? Not good. Anyway, onwards, uh, we are heading towards the longest cutting in all of the canals in Britain. Really? We are. This is Woods Eaves Cutting. It's the longest canal cutting in the UK. Did you know that? Nope. And it's a site of special scientific interest. Ooh. Your bowels should be a site of scientific interest. Not on the air. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes us from Turley towards Shebden. And some of the rock that they cut away, and it can be up to a hundred foot deep can this cut in. A lot of the rock they took away they used for other embankments, so Shebdiman embankment which we'll come to and they also used some of the rock to build the chambers at Turley Locks that we've just been through and they've got two really high bridges it just kind of spans uh, the farms that are like in between the fields uh, they're not like main roads or anything and sometimes you see these tractors going across these really high bridges like little helicopters flying above you it's weird. <laughs> What did you used to be before you were a canal boater? 
Bus driver. A bus driver, and what about before that? Truck driver. Truck driver. And I used to be a, a radio presenter and a personal trainer. Respectable names. You don't know where I'm going with this, do you? No, nope, I've no it, idea. It got me thinking when we went through Turley. Turley. So we're looking about what kind of uh, professions used to live at the stables under the wharf. Lengthsman. <coughs> Warfinger. How come they had like really cool names back then? I want to be a lengthsman. No! <laughs> Why are you laughing? Why is that funny? You're more of a warfinger anyway. <laughs> Just before we got to Turley, we knew that the water point wasn't working. We checked the CRT website. So I walked up a few days before and noticed that everything's flooded and all the services were kind of taped off with silver gaffer tape. That's quite a new Silver? Isn't it? Silver gaffer tape. There you go. Uh, so I checked the CRT website and noticed that basically what happened is all the water for the Turley services comes from like a private hole. Does that make sense? No. Uh, like a farmer owned a hole with a lot of water in it. <laughs> it wasn't connected to the mains. I don't know why that's funny. But anyway, the hole was empty. So that's why the CIT services are shut down. No, it's a true story. I know it is. Google that as well as bums if you want. <laughs> and so we knew we weren't going to get water there. But it says on the CIT website that the next services is at Market Drayton. Yeah. Which is like backwards from there. But... We found one. We found one. <laughs> the next kind of set of moorings from Durley. Uh, this is, where is it? I keep forgetting. Yeah. Gold, Goldstone Wharf. Goldstone Wharf. It's opposite the Wharf Tavern. Yeah, there's a wharf, there's a pub there, quite a busy one. Uh, and there's a water point here. So there you go. If you come in from Market Drayton through Turley uh, and you want water, you don't have to go all the way to Norbury Junction. Stop here just before Bridge 55. But watch out for the speeding boater. Oh. When we were coming through Woods Eve's Cutting, uh, we noticed a boat coming behind us and it was making some progress because we could see the wash it was making behind it and we don't normally name and shame boaters but when we pulled in it clearly could see us it was like a hundred yards behind us and it saw us pull in Sean holding the boat while we got it secured Fine. for the water point and it can tear ass in past us so I very politely very, you know what I'm like I'm quite polite said uh, <laughs> excuse me would you mind slowing down we, we're holding the boat they ignored me. Blanked me completely. So I went running after him. <laughs> I think it's on the GoPro footage. Yeah. But again, very, very nicely said, excuse me, Sean's trying to hold the boat and you're kind of going way past wash, creating a wash, and he can't control the boat. Oh, I thought your boat was moored. <laughs> well, that's no excuse. You go slow past moored boats anyway. Uh, so I've booked them on an RYA Helmsman's course. Have you? Yep, at their expense. Cool. We're off for a pint now. Ah! Good morning. Morning. We moored up about half a mile before Shebden, not Sheldon, as I keep calling it, but Shebden. <laughs> we got here yesterday after, well, should have been a two hour cruise. It turned into a five and a half hour cruise. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but we got here and it was a really nice spot and we just thought we'd stay here for the night. It's lovely. The views just behind you, you can see uh, Reekin, which is like a big hill massive hill it's like 1330 foot high and it's just stuck in the middle of nowhere there's no hills around it so it just stands out it's like a big mound it's like in the middle of like cheshire and staffordshire and and near telford so that's that way and last night it was lit up the sunset last night was just awesome it was like the clouds were on fire on fire it was amazing we are setting off nice and early this morning not a cloud in the sky there's no wind it's lovely Today, we're going that way towards Norbury and Norbury Junction. Yay! Hopefully there's a laundrette so we can get the bedding done. It's not been done since 2006. <laughs> it stands up on its own. Oh, 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 oh. Kidding. <laughs> we're kidding. <laughs> oh. Now there's a thought for you all, isn't it? Right, come on, let's leave them with that thought. This is the Knighton Food Factory. It was built in 1911 by Cadbury. Yeah, the Cadbury. And what would happen is every day, all the farmers, the dairy farmers locally, would leave the fresh milk on wooden stages like piers at the end of the fields. And a fleet of narrowboats would come and take the hundreds of milk churns from the farmers fresh down to the Cadbury factory here at Knighton. This is where it had been mixed with the cocoa and sugar to make the raw ingredient of chocolate. And from here, it was taken by a fleet of Cadbury's own narrowboats down to Bourneville, about 40 miles further down near Birmingham. Now, the last boat for Cadbury left here in 1961. Charlie Atkins was the last boater to go down to Bourneville, or Chocolate Charlie, as he was known. I fancy some chocolate now. You don't really think much when you're cruising along it, but imagine back in the early 1800s when they were building this thing, if you had like a farm and your house overlooked all the fields and everything on a lovely sunny day like this, and then all of a sudden one day you wake up and <laughs> this is Thomas Telford's built this great big embankment across your back doors. You won't be very happy, would you? Uh, but it's had a few leaks as this one. Back in 2009, they had to close it. It started draining away and it affected the canal from Norbury all the way up to uh, Hurlston Junction, which is miles back that way, past Nantwich. Bridge 41, Woo! which takes us into Grub Street Cutting. Uh, it's quite another, it's another deep cutting. It's not as deep as uh, Woods, Woods Eaves, Woods Sieves, Greaves, Jimmy Greaves, I don't know. Uh, it's about <laughs> eight, 80, 90 foot deep is this one. Uh, whereas Woods, Jimmy Greaves one is, is about 100 foot deep. And uh, it's suddenly got busy. We haven't passed a boat all day. And there's uh, boats everywhere. And then one pulls out in front of us. It's the same Speedy Gonzalez boat from yesterday. Do you remember where Sean was trying to hold the boat? It's like meow. Uh, so they pulled out in front of us, but they disappeared. Yeah, they've gone. <laughs> uh, but we've just had a higher boat go past us that way, uh, which is unusual for this time of year. And uh, now we've got another boat coming straight for us. So I'm going to move the camera <laughs> just in case. Come on, Dylan. 
Dylan. So guess who just jumped in the water again? Are you sorry? <laughs> I bet you're cold. Warm your bum up. Is that nice? Is that nice and Coming up to the Double Arch Bridge, uh, it's Bridge 39, and it's instantly recognisable because it's got this telegraph pole sat on the middle arch of it. And it used to be a proper in use telegraph pole back in the olden days when Sean was younger. <laughs> younger, not young. They, <laughs> they used to run the telephone lines, the telegraph cables, along the line of the, most of the Shropshire Union Canal. So it's kind of one of the relics that's still, still there, they've not taken it down yet. And apparently this bridge is haunted. Did you know that? Oh, is it? It's haunted by the man monkey of Ghost 39. Really? It sounds like an old friend of ours, doesn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, 1879, a chap was carrying suitcases for somebody over the bridge uh, about 10 o'clock at night. And apparently this, this big dark beast with massive bulging white eyes jumped out on him and jumped on his horse. Wow. So the man, obviously a little bit shaken up by this, tried whipping him with his whip. Don't get excited. <laughs> tried whipping him with his whip, but the whip went straight through him. Ooh. And he rode all the way to wherever it was he was going with this other bloke's suitcases with this man monkey on his back. There you go. Spooky. I don't know how much he'd had to drink. Quite a bit by the sound of it. I think I've got a shadow on me now, haven't I? Yes. Oh no, it's the man monkey! Oh. <laughs> Strawberry sounds like strawberry. <laughs> it doesn't smell like strawberries around here, it smells like pub food. Boats and pub food. <laughs> I tell you what, it's not often I like mooring with other boats around us. Not with like Mr. Generator following us everywhere. Go away. But it's actually quite nice here. It's quiet. Well, it is now. Yeah. It weren't early as people sewing wood and people fixing their engines and stuff. But it's kind of a nice, yeah. nice thing. A nice it's, little community, isn't it? Yeah, it's weird to explain. I tell you what, it is really nice here. This is one of my favourite kind of big moorings, if that makes sense, where you've got a lot of long term and visitor moorings together. And we got the last space on the visitor moorings, <laughs> which we're quite lucky. And it's a lovely place. We've just been for a pub lunch. Uh, there's a pub just on the junction. I'm not going to tell you what it's called, but it's a pub on the junction. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lovely kind of wharf, a uh, chandlery that does diesel and coal and pump out and, and, and there's toilets, all the facilities yeah. here. Uh, and it is, it's like Sean says, it's a really nice little community feeling. Yeah, it is. And I think the sun being out today just makes it better. It's like spring, isn't it? Yeah, it feels like spring today. It really does. Uh, next time you see us, we're going to be leaving Norbury heading further south towards the end of the shroppy. I wonder if Dylan will have dried out by then. <laughs> Bet he were cold. We don't know what happened. I was on the roof doing some photography because we were coming up towards bridge 39, you know, the telegraph bridge. And all I heard was Sean kind of 
in that final second of no <laughs> 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 and then I heard the splash, and when Dylan goes in, it's a very distinctive splash. He was running in and out of the boat looking for Colin. <laughs> so, so I had to come back, and then we... Luckily, he had his jacket on. He always has his jacket on when yeah. we're cruising. So we were able to pull him straight out again. <clears throat> Poor little thing. I mean, the water is absolutely freezing <laughs> cold. So we got him on the towpath, and we were just rinsing him down with warm water. Uh, just to warm him up and, and get the canal water off him. <laughs> uh, and then we had to sit, we keep looking down there, he's sat looking at us. Uh, then we took him inside, we toweled him down and uh, put him fine. in the warm. He's absolutely fine. Tail never stops wagging, <laughs> even though he stood there shivering, <laughs> freezing. Even in the water, all like a little propeller behind him. <laughs> <laughs> and he has this really good instinct as soon as he goes in, because obviously the boat's moving, we turn the prop off straight away. As soon as he goes in, prop stops and he comes swimming towards us. He's a, he's a good little swimmer isn't he? Yeah he is. He's looking all sorry for himself. Uh, anyway excitement over. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this vlog. If you have uh, please support us by giving us a thumbs up. Uh, if you're not already subscribed just click that button down below. As soon as you've done that hit the bell and, uh, and YouTube even will let you know every time we release a brand new vlog. It's the notifications bell. Uh, if you want to support the channel there's two ways you can do it. You can become a YouTube member. Just click the join button on our homepage for more details on that or you can become a Patreon. There's a link to that coming up just after the outtakes. Yes. Any comments or feedback or anything if you want to feel sorry for Dylan or correct me on my pronunciation of anything. <laughs> you can Which do you so. will. You can do so down below and take care of yourselves and we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye bye. See you. Bye. You laughed last time we did that. <laughs> I've got a bit of a ret 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, Can you hear it? Hi. Even with your tinnitus? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <sighs> Sorry. What place are we talking about? Lundwood. Lund Lundwood. <laughs> In kind of. Woo! Because I bet you. I, 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 yeah, yeah. And try again. Wow, we did something in one take. Out of wood. Are you alright there? <sighs> bit snotty. Eh? Mm. He's a Charlie. Durley. Turley. Turley should be in Lancashire, shouldn't it? Is, uh, I've forgotten the name of it. Uh, behind you, behind, behind, he, hein. I think we've got to do that again. You all right, Maud? Wah, I am Gert. Uh, <laughs> you'll, get, you'll get letters. <laughs> got to cop, got to cop, start getting, yeah, yeah. I might do well in prison, a nice boy like me. <laughs> yes, woof, woof, woof. Hundred green bottles hanging <laughs> on the wall. <laughs>